Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and you wouldn't believe the incredible information I got from one of the lead epidemiologists out of Haiti. For a long time, people kept on hearing rumors that Haiti had done particularly well in the pandemic. And the counter argument has always been, oh, come on, don't be ridiculous. Haiti only had 2.7% of the population vaccinated. They didn't have a strong healthcare infrastructure. How in the world could they not have died in large numbers? And so you would hear people saying things like, well, it's just because all the people were dying in the rural areas and nobody counted them. Nobody took them to hospital. That was ridiculous. I knew it at the time, but I couldn't prove it until now. And what I've done is I have had an interview with Dr. Patrick Deli. Patrick Deli. This guy was the lead epidemiologist during the COVID time. And the link for this is in the description below. You can see the full interview on Substack. There's some parts in French and English. We've had somebody helping us with the translation. But we captured the conversation about what happened. And let me tell you, unbelievably, Haiti had probably one of the best systems set up in preparation for the pandemic. They acted quickly. They were able to identify all the patterns because they had systems already set up from 2010 because of the earthquake that they were able to repurpose for COVID. So when we talk about the fact that out of 11 million people with poor health infrastructure, they had only about 837 COVID deaths. That is by far the most incredible outcome from the pandemic. So people may ask themselves, well, <clears throat> why are we talking about it now? Okay, great. You know, uh, so what? COVID is behind us. That's where you have to think very, very carefully, because I'll deal with this in a separate presentation, but NB181 is spreading across the world, driving up infections, seeming to cause more severe disease. The WHO has designated it a variant under monitoring. Now, for anyone who has been following anything related to Gert van den Bosch, he expects at some point we are going to have this monster variant. I think he's right, but it's probably not going to present with simply respiratory disease, but it's going to make a lot of people sick. So here is where the link to Haiti comes in. Guess what? This is where we've got a problem with regards to what occurs in the immune system across highly vaccinated regions. On the left is the original Wuhan virus, an orange lady with orange hair. And on the right is a similar looking person, purple, with purple hair. And you would say, obviously, these look very similar, but not to an immune system that is focused on the orange top and is unable to recognize the purple top as being almost the same thing. That is exactly what has happened to immune systems that are hyper-focused on the original spike protein and are struggling to shift their focus and therefore are producing antibodies that are unable to neutralize this virus. We have a problem. And the solution, sadly, is not going to be with vaccines. Because already you can see what's happening in the U.S., where they're shifting away from the use of vaccines for the healthy population. They're leaving it just for the high risk. They are no longer recommending it in children and in pregnancy. And so what it means is across the world, where the only thing in the bucket or in the basket was vaccines, there is now nothing. There are no options. And you have a variant coming along 
eventually, if it's not this NB181, it's going to be another one that is going to spread widely across the world and likely to cause severe disease. And there is nothing. So the reality is, when we think about what happened in Haiti, because they got these outcomes even in the early part of the pandemic, it wasn't just beyond in terms of vaccines. That's probably one of the reasons why it was so difficult to vaccinate the population. They didn't really have many deaths. As Dr. Patrick Dealey had said, and if you're just joining me, one of the most important discussions you can listen to is about what happened there. This was one of the lead epidemiologists leading the way in Haiti. He doesn't have a full explanation as to why it happened, but what an incredible outcome. And the point is, we now need to figure out what the Haitians did, why it worked, and can it be replicated across the world. That's what we need now is thinkers. We need the Dr. Shettis who can understand what is going on and say, let's try this. Because at the moment, there is nothing in the basket. No matter how many people argue and are happy that, in a sense, the focus is being shifted away from vaccines, remember, they still have not acknowledged the fact that early treatment could have worked. They haven't acknowledge the potential benefit of rhymes with pectin or the other drug that I can't mention used for malaria, they still have not put that in the basket. Not even vitamin D is being recommended for the population. Literally, there is nothing in the basket. The outcomes, if you leave it like that, are going to be horrific. Because a lot of people don't realize that when we think about what is happening with COVID is that it has changed the presentation. It's no longer just a respiratory virus. It's more likely to look something like this. Initial symptoms are pretty mild, but behind it, in the next weeks to months, chronic immune activation with lots of neurological symptoms, increased clotting, strokes, heart attacks, worsening dementia, respiratory issues, chronic fatigue. A lot of people are already suffering from these things and they have no idea why. That's what we're up against. And what needs to happen now is that we need solutions in the basket. At the moment, there is zero. You are left on your own to figure this out. And you have to hope you don't get sick. So I would advise a point of reflection. Make sure you listen to this conversation. He doesn't necessarily tell us all the answers. He tells us what happened, what he did, why they had some good outcomes because of the structure of their system and the surveillance. And he speaks at some point about some of the natural remedies that people were using. Those may be the clue as to why they were so successful. I would advise you to take a listen. We do need this kind of thinking now to find solutions from what could be probably the best global COVID outcome for a country, bar none. 837 deaths, and he said, Categorically, they knew every death. They would have seen the change in deaths because they had a, such a sophisticated surveillance program. It was not accidental. And so they didn't have the deaths. How in the world was that possible? Whatever they did, we need it now. Just a final reminder, coming up shortly is our conference. You can find the link below to join us and register so you don't miss it, Hidden Drivers of Post-COVID Dysfunction. I keep on reminding people that you may think this is over, but believe me, it is not.
This was published on the 28th of May, 2025. Another variant, and it's just a matter of time before we get one that really does some serious damage. I don't know if it's that one, but I trust what Gertz thinks in terms of his instincts. We're likely to face one at some point. We need as many tools in the basket as we can. Have a great evening.